finally found that little bugger. Yeah, he has feathers. Oh, you bet he clucks. All right, I'm gonna do it. Ready? Three, two. Hey guys, it's the Nathan Sorter Nine here. Yeah, I need more things to not finish. Plastic? Yes. Wasting money? Also yes. Playing games is a close... Occasionally. Let's all be honest here. Physical media is a dying medium. But that doesn't mean I don't love it. I have always loved owning media physically. Whether it be movies or music, the fact that I can physically hold something that I can watch, listen to, or play, I've always loved that. But the type of physical media I love collecting the most is video games. And if you know me, I don't know if you would be able to tell. Gaming is one of the many mediums turning into a digital world. Everyone loves convenience nowadays, and plastic isn't free. Why drive out to a store and buy a game, then having to open it up and put it in the console and wait for updates, when you can just download it to your system while you're in the bath? Not me though, I love the whole experience of getting games physically. I refuse to get a digital game unless that is the only way you can play a game. Which kinda sucks when they do end up releasing the game physically months or even years later. I'm still shaking over Sonic Mania. So now? The question is, how do you get these? Physical games just don't appear in your house. You actually have to go out and find these yourself, which is why I like to do a little thing I like to call <laughs> wasting gas. Game hunting. When a video game collector goes out of the way to seek and hunt down DECA SPORTS 2, NO WAY! Video game collecting is a hobby many people enjoy, including myself. Having a plethora of games all lined up on a shelf, full of history and innovation and dear god please help me. It's just so satisfying to see. But this gap really scares me. Call me greedy, but this isn't enough. Sometimes I want to play Cooking Mama Cookstar, and it's just not there. This is when there's a need to game hunt. And the most efficient way to do this is to get yourself to a game store. Step one, before you go, make sure you know what you're looking for. Games come in all shapes and sizes. You need to have an idea of what kind of games you're looking for. What console, what genre, what series, one you won't finish. Also, be aware that games vary in price. Hunting for an NES game is not the same as hunting for a GameCube game. I'd suggest creating a list of games you're looking to find, then looking up the price it typically goes for on a site like price charting. Now that you're prepared, step two. Get yourself into a vehicle. A car, truck, dune buggy, anything will do. And for crying out loud, make sure you're licensed to drive one of these vehicles. I have experience. Also, make sure you know where you're going, and if you don't, a trusty map will always do the trick. So with that, I got my license right here, map on lap, and wallet in hand. So it's time to hit up the first store. All right, should be here on my left. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. Let's head into my first store, GameStop. Which way is left again? Our first hunting location is any example of a retail game store chain. For instance, GameStop. GameStop is probably the first name that comes to your mind when you think about a game store. Unless you live in the UK, where your only options are game or sex. I should really trust my instincts more. Stores like GameStop have been around forever. They were once, and for many people, still are, the place to go pick up new releases of games. And Powerpuff Girls glass tumblers. Yeah, GameStop is just cluttered with random junk. It's turned into more of a pop culture store than a video game store at this point. For every Octopath Traveler, you'll find a Snoop Dogg Funko Pop. Plus, with the really low trade-in value and the constant shoving of a membership down your throat, 
A lot of people have given up on GameStop and resorted to other stores or just started buying games digitally. And as for hunting, GameStop isn't really the best option. It's great for new releases of games, but as for game collecting, there's way better options out there. Yeah, they do have their bargain bins full of used games, but it's only really for modern platforms and the selection isn't the greatest at times. GameStop isn't really a store you think about when you think about game hunting, especially for retro games. Sure, it has a vast amount of modern releases, but for game collecting, it isn't really ideal. But we have more options. <sighs> Retail stores just don't understand my need for owning Boogie for the Wii. Which is why we need to shop locally. Oh, so it turns out there's a local retro game store not that far from here. I just need to take a, a right. Wait. I think I got it this time. My other right! Locally owned retro game stores are perfect for game hunting. Walking into one of these, I don't know about you, but I just get this sense of nostalgia. A bunch of old gaming advertisements, posters, even old display cabinets. Not being born in the time a lot of these retro games first were out on store shelves, it really gives me a sense of what it was like to be back in those days. Retro game stores typically have a pretty wide selection of games from decades upon decades and console after console. It's honestly just so cool to look around one of these. Even if I don't find anything to buy or honestly just can't afford it, it's super cool to see all these games in person. As for game hunting, these stores are perfect for it. Heck, even probably the reason game hunting even exists to this day. Like I said earlier, the prices vary. It can go from the nickel I found on the street to- OH GOD IS THAT MY HOUSE MORTGAGE?! Video game hunting is a very pricey pastime, and all these retro game stores are very aware of this. So this means that Sonic Mega Collection is worth $40 instead of $20, which just doesn't seem right to me at all. That's the downside a lot of these retro game stores have. They know exactly what they're selling and how much it's worth. They can easily double the price of something and a parent wouldn't know any better. Despite that flaw, they really do take amazing care of their games for the most part. Some offer exchanges for faulty units, even free disc cleaning. But again, those price points might turn people away from these stores. Don't get me wrong, I love them a tremendous amount, but they just aren't affordable a lot of the time. But you know what is affordable? Secondhand jeans from 1987. Because I'm in the mood for a little thrifting, I need some new jeans. But not just any old jeans, I want jeans with experience. Jeans that have met 20 asses before mine. So we're going thrift shopping and I'm in luck because I am certain this time that there's a thrift store straight ahead of me. It was straight behind me, wasn't it? Thrift stores aren't really everyone's cup of tea, but guess what? I don't like tea. Thrift stores are super interesting to me. I don't go to them all the time or anything, but from time to time, I just love browsing through them. Sometimes they're just funny. But the main reason I go to these, besides for old jeans, is to find video games. Since thrift stores aren't real game stores, they have no idea how much what they are selling is worth. That's a huge upside for thrift stores. The games are extremely cheap but they're also extremely huh? The downfall to thrift stores is that the selection is and and it really varies between different thrift stores if you're going to find any good games. My local stores never really have anything huge. The selection is very small and weird too, but if you're looking for deal or no deal for $4.99, then that sounds like a deal to me. Another place in the same vein as a thrift store is a pawn shop. I don't know if anyone else has the same experience, but my local pawn shop has a way better selection of games compared to the thrift store. I've gotten a few pretty good games from here. My copy of Twilight Princess, Mario Party 8, Animal Crossing City Folk, Mario Kart 64, and Smash 64, all at this pawn shop for really good prices. I'd say a lot of my game hunting has been spent here. The only major downside for pawn shops and thrift stores as well is that they don't care as much. Because games are not the primary thing they sell, Games most likely haven't been cleaned properly, and they're in worse shape. Like, I'm pretty sure someone's dog got to my copy of Mario Party 8. 
there's also a higher risk of games just not working properly, which is a gamble for game hunting in general. Personally, I haven't run into any issues myself, but it does happen. The same day I bought these two games at the pawn shop, my brother also bought Yoshi's Story. My games worked fine, but not Yoshi's Story. So it's really your own risk when buying used games. But besides that, thrift stores and pawn shops are definitely a great place to hunt. I'd say just as equal as actual game stores are. Well, I didn't find any games, but I found these sick jeans. Oh, just look how blue they are. I missed the checkout, didn't I? Well, say hello to the newest convicted criminal in town. I guess I just got way too excited about those jeans because I just walked out of there without even thinking about paying. But at least I'm on this watch list now. So I've been put on house arrest for the next week, which means I can't finish my game hunting. Or can I? Welcome to what the kids call these days an artificial intelligence thinking machine CPU box. But what I like to call a computer. A lot of shopping nowadays is just done online. It's a lot more convenient for some people. Which also makes it easier to hunt for video games. So someone told me about this site one time where it should be able to bring me to buy some video games. So uh, what was it again? It was was it www.xxxvideogames.com. Oh go no 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 no! Online shopping is a huge part of how we spend money nowadays. For the most part, everything we need can be found online now. Don't want to leave the house to find yourself a new leaf blower? Well, head on over to eBay.com. eBay is one of the most well-known online stores. Anyone can sell anything on here. Literally anything. And sites like eBay have become another efficient way to game hunt. There are so many different listings on here with a way bigger variety to choose from. Literally search up any game you're looking for and it'll most likely be there. And sometimes the prices are even better compared to finding these in a physical store. I've had way more luck game hunting on eBay than at an actual store. I found some really cool things for pretty good prices. I found all my recent GameCube games there. The Mario All-Stars 25th Anniversary Edition on Wii, and even Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival brand new in box. And I bought it for some reason. Probably the only downside to hunting for games online is when you try to buy Rhythm Heaven Fever and then... Yeah. The big risk of buying games online is that scammers are real. You can't physically see the product you're trying to buy. Sure, the seller can attach pictures of the product, but... Google Images exists. Some doof nugget online could own some stupid game that is just not selling at all. Like, come on, who wouldn't want to buy Chicken Shoot? So to solve their issue, they go onto Google, look up an image for a sought after game, stick it onto a listing for a very high price, and then some none the wiser customer buys it. And now it's off that person's hands. So they can just sit back with the other person at least they did receive a game. Again, I don't have any personal experience with this but it can happen. Besides that risk, in all honesty, I think I enjoy game hunting online the most. There's just something so cool about finding a game you always wanted, then anticipate for the day it arrives at your doorstep. I don't know, for me, I find that really exciting. And I think it's definitely my preferred form of game hunting. So even though I didn't end up buying any games today, that's okay. Any game collector is going to have those days where you just don't find anything. But you know, buying games isn't the only thing to take away from game hunting. It's also about the experience. Going out to the store, being surrounded by all these games and advertisements, there's just something so magical about that for any video game fan. And knowing that one day you can go back to that game store and finally buy that game you've been eyeing down. Maybe you have the money for it now, or you just feel like doing it. That's such an exciting feeling. But hey, that excitement sometimes puts you on house arrest. And now I'm here for a week with no new games to not play. But at least they let me keep the jeans.